Hey everybody, Kurt Slosser. I'm inside the spheres for our latest episode of In Front of One Fern. Actually, it's the uh, ceremonial first planting today of uh, the first plant at the Amazon spheres down here in downtown Seattle. We are standing beneath an Australian tree fern and let's talk to a couple people about what went on today and what to expect. We're inside the spheres today with John Shuttler. Right. Your title is? Vice President, Global Real Estate and Facilities. That's right. I knew that, but I needed you to say it, so I really knew it. That's all right. Good to see you again. This is a great event today. Big Thank day you. for Amazon, big day for the city of Seattle. Tell us a little bit more about, because you've covered a bunch of stuff that we, uh, that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you envision a worker using this space and, and what you think they'll get out of it. Well, to me, it is a, um, a new, uh, innovative, creative workspace. There won't be desks in here, but there'll be great spaces for you to come and sit down with your laptop or your cell phone and your handheld device and a friend, a uh, colleague, workmate, uh, could be a candidate that you're interviewing for a job here at Amazon. You come and have a completely different experience than sitting in a conference room. How does, an, how does another tech company in town compete with an interview that takes place inside the spheres? I don't know. I mean, can't comment on what it's like to interview at other tech companies, but uh, I think it'd be fun. So it does, it, can you uh, refresh us? I, I feel like I've heard different answers on this. Is the public going to have access to this or will there be special uh, times of the year or days or weeks? And, and tell us a little bit about that. So the spheres will actually be part of our um, campus tour program that we currently have. And you'll be able to go online and sign up for campus tours, and this will be uh, one of the stops that will pe bring people through. Um, we have uh, tour programs also for our fulfillment centers, and that's where the tour program originally started. So when the spheres are open next year and uh, everything is ready to go, you'll be able to go online and sign up for them. That's a pretty cool tour. It's better than a straight-up office environment tour, but... Right, yeah. And, uh, and tell us a little bit more about well, what could be next? How do you follow the spheres? What is, does Amazon have anything up its sleeve as far as another architectural marvel uh, that you would even tip your hat to? I can't, I don't, I, I don't have anything on the docket right now. We do have a lot of other buildings that we're gonna build um, here in Seattle that are gonna be really super cool and great spaces for our employees to work hard and, and uh, innovate on behalf of our customers. But um, nothing quite like this. This is a one of a kind. It certainly is. And I'd have to ask you, because we report on Amazon quite a bit, anything uh, you can say about Bellevue and, and maybe there'll be spheres in Bellevue someday, or what, what you can say about that, that, the talk of that expansion over to the east side? We're really excited about uh, moving uh, some offices over to Bellevue. We're actually um, are gonna be having our first employees working there um, early this summer uh, in July. And uh, we're not moving teams from Seattle, per se, over there. Uh, it's all new incremental headcount, and we're going to be building teams over there. And uh, it's more of a regional play, if you think about it. Uh, Seattle, Bellevue, this is all one big uh, metropolis, and I'm kind of saying that with my Chamber of Commerce hat um, as the <laughs> former chair of the uh, Seattle Chamber. And you think about this area as, uh, you know, to be globally competitive, and uh, both our cities are world-class cities, so we're really happy to be a part of that area as well. We were curious. We, uh, they were the biodomes, they were the orbs, they were the glass spheres, they were Amazon's glass domes. How did spheres become, these spheres become the final name? I can tell you that naming these buildings was more difficult than naming a product and certainly more difficult than naming a child. Um, you know, the Space Needle is the Space Needle, and so these are the spheres, and we thought, why fiddle with it? It is what it is, and uh, it, uh, the spheres stuck, and so there you have it. All right, the spheres it is. Thanks, John. I'm here with Ron Galliardo. He is the head of this whole project inside the spheres, the, the chief horticulturalist, is that what we would call you? The supreme plant leader? What do you, what do you like? Um, around the office, they call me the Lorax. Oh, the Lorax, my kids love that movie. <laughs> All right, Lorax, how did we settle on uh, Aus Australian tree fern as yeah. plant one? People asked me for a name for this fern earlier. I'm going to call it Saurus, S-O-R-U-S. You can look it up later and tell me why, it's, why this tree fern is named Saurus. Okay. Anyway, this is one of the first plants that we actually started growing in our greenhouse. So three years ago, we started bringing, you know, uh, amassing this collection. And uh, 
these came, so little tree ferns came as little plugs grown in a laboratory. And we grew them from these little plugs to what you see here today. So it made sense for a number of reasons for this plant to be first. It's obviously, it's, it's beautiful, it's big and healthy, and it was one of the first plants that actually came into our collection. Okay. Yeah, it looks like something I could grow in my yard, but maybe not in the Pacific Northwest. There, there are some tree ferns that are uh, winter hardy in our area. So there's another genus called Dixonia. Uh, uh, that's uh, another type of tree fern that, that is hardy to some degree in our area. So the spheres are open. They're full of species. There are workers milling about in here. What does that, what does that, take us through that. What does that look like to you? To me, it looks like people, people wandering around a little bit, maybe having a walking meeting with a colleague or enjoying a coffee, but, but stopping to look at things. And for me, I've said it too many times maybe, but success is when somebody stops and looks really closely at something, right. whether it's here in a planting bed or over on the living wall. Um, uh, we want to create a diverse, lush, bio botanically rich environment uh, that people can can appreciate and learn from. And so we're you know we're pretty comfortable in here today. It's an, it's actually a nice warm day outside in Seattle. What what's the what's the climate going to feel like when when everything's up and running? Very much like we're feeling now. So 72 to 75 degrees, about 60 percent humidity, um, and that is for most people a very comfortable place to be. And as far as your, your work day, is, do you have an office in here? Does that defeat the purpose of being an office free? Uh, <laughs> you have like an office on the top and you come down and tend I to wish. <laughs> I wish. So as, as, as you may know, there's no, like, there are no cubicles in here, no, no desks, no telephones or desktop computers. It's a very flexible space. Um, there'll be some indoor, outdoor furniture type environments in here for people to sit with their laptop if they want. Uh, my office, we have actually a special horticultural head house office down in the basement of the building where we have all our supplies and we have the controlling, uh, all the, the uh, building automation system to control the climate and temperature and that kind of thing. And what do you think your main scope of responsibility will be once everything's up and running? Ma maintaining the health mainly of the plants or, or making sure they thrive or changing them out? A combination of all. I think over the time, the spheres has um, has evolved from uh, an office in a park, in an indoor park kind of thing, where people are working all the time, to a place where people not only could sit with their laptop, but they can come to be educated and be motivated and experience a different environment. And I think this is one of the most forward-thinking parts of Amazon to look at how do we do this and provide a place where that is so different from a typical office. And over the course of the past three years, what I've seen is that that mission of creating this experience um, and this not only a visceral experience, but you like because it feels good in here, and, and, and it's going to feel even better when you're surrounded by plants, of course. So your brain, your brain on nature kind of thing, uh, which is becoming more and more evident, more and more scientifically proven, et cetera. It's, um, it's also... Uh, about um, pulling people away from their daily lives to discover something new. Well, it's quite a scene, and thanks for showing it off today. I look forward of to course. coming back when it's fully loaded. <laughs> yeah, it'll be. It, well, this is this is day one for planting, so it continues. Thanks, yeah, thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. Yeah.